Welcome to the Dobsonian Power Channel Night Saturday Night Sessions where we watch the sky in real time with you from all over the world. And we will have tonight the breaking news, some community pictures from you, and also we will have the 6-inch Virtuoso outside to watch the rest of the galaxies we couldn't watch yesterday. So we will have the wheel to choose to pick the galaxies you chose yesterday. I couldn't resist because the weather is slightly better tonight here. It's still a layer of thin clouds, but it's fair enough for us to use the Virtuoso. With the wind, the wind is uh, slightly weaker tonight also, so it will be hopefully a better session than yesterday. Although yesterday was very nice. You saw the pictures, the result of the night, and it was amazing. I'm sure you like. Fred Led, Christoph, Astrocade, Alex, Book Davis, Jekata, welcome to this channel. And Puna, welcome to this channel. Aloha. Are you in Hawaii? Hawaii? Oh, what a week, what a week. Did you notice that the more things we have, the more problems we have? If you, I mean, if you have more uh, houses or cars or more space in a house and more stuff, more problems. A backyard, more problems you have to fix. Okay, let's right away. Let's see. It, this is the third, the first, uh, the third time that I will use the Virtuos, the 6-inch Virtuos, which is this small and inexpensive telescope, a Dobsonian telescope with GoTo, so it means that it tracks the sky and uh, it will be connected with Stellarium, SynScan, which is the native application of the telescope, and also SharpCap to capture the images in real time, deep sky object images. So it's the third time that I will try this connection. Hopefully this time will be flawless. So I have to remember, finish the alignment first. So I have the telescope outside in the start position. So horizontally and pointing north to the Polaris, but not pointing to the Polaris, horizontally. It's the start position of the Virtuoso. So let's start by connecting the go-to. Hold on. Yeah, it's much, much better, the wind, the weather. So connect Wi-Fi to the scene scan. And now open scene scan application. Here for you to see. Connect. It's connected. And now... Open SharpCap. The new version we will be also using. The new version, it's a beta version, but has loads of features, new features, and it's working fine now. So open SharpCap. Hello, Ray. Hello, Christoph. Jim. San Luis. Quasar. So open everything. The 294 camera is inside the focuser and also a bother, a bother infrared ultraviolet cut filter. <clears throat> the I didn't touch the, the focuser or anything, so it should be focused, but we will see in a minute. Star alignment, one star only, Polaris, begin. Mm 
Now the telescope is moving up. And hopefully we'll find Polaris. Yeah! Good. Interesting. Tonight I did a trick. I have a level. A bubble level in over the, the tube. But as my outside floor is, is uneven. It's not uh, leveled. I don't use the bubble level exactly as it should be well usually i use but tonight i slightly bend it and uh, it worked better it's a test that it's a thing that i'm testing to place the, the telescope the virtuoso in the start position but not completely leveled because the base is not leveled i don't know if it, it seems it works at least it's better it captured Polaris. So I will move to center Polaris. This is also with a focal reducer, a cheap focal reducer, 0.5x, but it's not at 0.5x. It's uh, near the sensor, so it will be at 0.80, more or less. Bit more. Okay, so far so good. We tell the telescope that we he found Polaris and now we finish it, the alignment. This was important because yesterday I didn't finish the alignment. It's moving. The mount it's moving, but it's not the wind. It's not strong right now. Actually, the wind right now would allow me to use a, a larger telescope, but I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't want to risk tonight. And I, I wanted to take a chance because next week I see the forecast with rain and storm weather. Stormy weather. And I didn't want to, to lose this opportunity. It's Saturday night. <clears throat> Well, I can try to focus a bit more as the wind is, is weak. Let me try to focus with these stars as a reference. Hello, John Boyley, Birdman Cat Daddy. We have some pictures from Birdman Cat Daddy. MB, MB, MB. <laughs> from uh, Facebook. We are streaming to Facebook also. Book Davis, Mazif. Mazif is in the house. Are you in the garage? Bartek. Tuloco. Pedro. Okay, I will first try to fine tune the focus. If it's possible, I don't know. Hold on. It will get uh, weird the color because it will the light from inside will bump the telescope it's moving again the mount this mount is a bit weird look it's moving let me make it stop it's moving to the left now incredible I need it to stop. Okay. The telescope is right here. Right here. Look.
Perfect. Perfect. Do you know what I was doing? I was zooming here, but I was not looking at Polaris because the fine tune. What is this? Here we have always weird objects. The fine tune will not change the spikes in the 6 inch. If it is the 8 inch or the 12 inch or a 10, it's moving again the mount. <sighs> Out. Where is Polaris? Now what? Did he move down or up? No. I have to go up. This issues with the mount. The connection of the mount or something. It's here again. I will tell you what I was doing. In the 8 inch, or the 10 inch, or the 12 inch, you can easily, that's why I don't use batting of masks, you can easily adjust, fine tune with the spikes of the star and then the other stars. Here, if I fine tune, the focuser will not change because there is a a smaller, a shorter fo focal length, this telescope, it's a wider field of view. The fine tuning of the focuser will not change the spikes. So I can't see what's the better position of the focuser. So the trick I use is, after I have the spikes okay, it's to focus on small stars. I was watching this pattern here this pattern this was the pattern of very faint and small stars that I was taking as a reference <coughs> to focus to fine-tune the focus okay now now that we have all aligned let's open Stellarium and connect the telescope Another one? Near Polaris, there are always... Another one? Two? Okay, Stellarium. Let's see if this time... So far, so good. So good. <clears throat> so, open the telescope. Virtuoso, connect, it's connected. Now, I think it's correct. Let me see, Polaris, the telescope here. Yes, I think it's correct. So now, Let's open the wheel. The wheel. the wheel. The wheel, for the ones that don't know, is what we use to pick an object to watch in real time. But the objects that are in the wheel and will be shows, chosen randomly were objects that you chose yesterday in a chat. The other ones were being removed after we saw them, uh, after we watched them. And now we have the sombrero and these galaxies. So let's spin the wheel. Three, two, one, go. And here we have
We have the winner, Sombrero Galaxy, love it. Love it, love it. Yesterday someone here was asking for the sombrero and had no luck, but tonight we will watch the Sombrero Galaxy. So, so far so good. Moved. Okay, let's do the plate solvent sink first. Here on sharp cap. I think it worked yesterday. To set everything. This is a powerful software. Solving. And here we are, yes. As you can see, we don't need to do anything. The software does it all. Okay, now we search here in a search box. Sombrero. Sombrero Galaxy. Near Corvus constellation, between Virgo and Corvus. It's a beautiful galaxy. Let me see the altitude. 41, still fine. And now we will do control 2. Because it's the telescope number 2 that I have in the list. So control 2. And it should move. The telescope. It's moving slowly because it's not a virtual telescope. When I use the, the equatorial platform, it's a virtual telescope. It's fast. But now the telescope is really moving. It's moving here and it's doing the exactly the same movement outside which is awesome and bam minimize a bit of delay and uh, let me stretch this to see if we can see but I don't see the sombrero here Let's solve. Sharp cap. What's a vowel? Book Davis, what's a vowel? Yes, Bartek is very cool. Okay, plate solve. Let me check here. Yes, it's slightly off. We do again the control 2, as far as I remember. It will work. Okay, minimize. Still not there. Or maybe it's there and I can't see it. Can be. Let me... Ah, it's moving the mount. Come on. Plate solve again. Okay. What was that? Lots of weird objects. Okay, control one again. Sombrero is down. Control two. Control two. Ah, now it's here. You see it the third time? We just have to insist. Very nice. Look, the sombrero is here at the middle. Now, as we don't have much wind but the, the mount is moving it's second it's moving again what happened with this mount what's happening here let's adjust this with sharp cap with the arrows it working i want the galaxy at the center because as i'm using the focal reducer you know that is all a mess. Another object. What's happening here? Are you be are we being attacked by aliens or something? It's probably seven time or eight 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 objects here. Okay, it's moving with the arrows of sharp cap. This is nice, this connection between softwares it's an easy connection to do okay 
I'll do eight, eight seconds. And then we'll see. It's, it's with the flats. But it doesn't matter. Ah. Uh. What? It's this one. Virtuoso. Another object. Look. Another object here. Clear. What's happening here? Is it Elon Musk time? What time is it here? Half past ten. Quarter to eleven. Okay, let's adjust. She'll be. She'll be will be the um, Elon Musk playing another one look look incredible look bam let me go outside Don't see nothing. Hot pixels. Okay, this is because of the flats that I'm using. But I will cut anyway, so... Enhancement. And sharp mask. Yeah, we have hot pixels. Let me try... With the other flats. The flats, I think they don't do... It's the, the darks are the ones, the darks, are the ones that clean the hot pixels. Look, the, the mount is moving again. Oh my god. Now that I nailed it with the software. Now that I nailed it. It's tricking me. And on Monday, I will... Likely on Monday. Again, the mount moving. I will um, receive the, the table, a mini table for the Virtuoso. To have it here behind me and to have it outside when I need it higher. Higher on the ground. To do visual with it if I need. It's moving. But it's not windy now, I think. Let me... Yeah, this is the mount. Let me adjust again. This should be the mount. Or the wind is starting to flow. Again, like yesterday. This is not very reliable, the weather here. Right now. We stopped. Okay, sequencer again. 8 seconds. Thank you, Christoph. Yeah, it should be the wind. Now it's quiet. I don't know. We'll see. Because when the mount is 
another object here. But I was outside, I didn't see anything. Clear. Satellite's party. Look. And it's slow. I will have to wait a bit for him to get here. Look, it's moving, you see? Look. And the mount also moving. Look, look, look. What's happening tonight? Are they watching us? <laughs> a funny thing yesterday. <laughs> you see, that's why astrophotography. <laughs> when we when we get into astrophotography, we do whatever we want. I had in one of the pictures from yesterday live stream, I had a, a not pixel like this one right below the galaxy. I just did a click and uh, it disappeared. Who will know that? No one. And if a star was there, bye bye star. Who cares? Clear again. It could be the, the last time we see here live this galaxy. I don't know, because the with a 12 inch this year, I couldn't get a, a good uh, capture. It's still here, the object. Look, it's a, a slow satellite. Still here. Look, look, look. If tomorrow in the news you listen something weird, we got it. On camera. clear again and I think it it's enough because the satellite is out of view hey Randall greetings to Dakota the Saturn moon conjunction I usually don't uh, image those conjunctions, I at least me. I go outside to watch them in with naked eye. I don't know, I prefer. Now let's play with the histogram, because I think it's better now. Let's place a filter here. To 6, because of the, the weird movements of the mount. We lower to 6, everything above 6. I think they are arc seconds. It will be rejected. So we can be playing in the safe zone. Because the mount is weird. But even like that, look. will be a good image here but I can't increase the exposure for more we have 8 seconds right now lower the blue ok 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 it's getting better now So I purchased the, that uh, table, mini table, for the Virtuoso. With the measures, I think they are the right measures, we'll see. We will see, because on, my, on Monday, likely I will be live streaming at my afternoon GMT time zone. Mounting the... Uh, it's easy to mount, that kind of stuff. Mounting the um, the table. Thanks, Quasar, for gifting five Dobsonian power memberships. Crazy. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. More five members more to this channel. Fred Led, you are now a channel member. Christoph, you are now a channel member. 24/7 also. And Scorpio and David Woods, welcome. Some of you welcome back. Welcome. Remember that you have access to the um, the members live stream the past live streams if you interested in any topic i will be doing more live streams like those but uh, i will do them in nights like the full moon that uh, the telescope is not uh, very good outside so i will take the chance those nights to do that kind of uh, live streams just for members if you have any doubt post on discord you have a, a special section on discord just for members the youtube channel members you can post there anything that you want me to to bring to those live streams where we have a chat you can go on camera we are just in a more in a private space it's more comfortable and you also are allowed if you connect your discord to youtube you can post links there and also you can post uh, uh, news in the channel members section that uh, I bring to the breaking news as we will have actually tonight. The breaking news tonight will be from a link that Samir posted in, in that uh, section of the channel. What happened? It's getting crazy. Come on, don't do that to me because I need more time to get a good image here. Wow, what's happening here? Let me see the live view. It's moving. Okay, I will pause. Let's see if it works. Let's see if this works. Pause the live stack and move the mount again recenter the object i don't mind if it cuts the um, the edges because i will crop it anyway so the mount is paused right now i have to deal with it oh too much because this is eight seconds another object at the left this is crazy tonight no, it was not an object. It was the star moving. Because I'm using 8 seconds exposures. So each time I move, I will have to wait 8 seconds. Thank God I'm using lower exposures. If I was with 30 seconds, I will have to wait 30 seconds for this to work. Because I think pausing, as I did, pausing the, the stack, I'm not sure, but I think that I can't change anything. I'm not sure. I, I think I will ask Robin. Now it's centered. I will ask Robin. Okay, it's centered. Stop. And now resume. Let's see if it works. Look at this. All red, red, red. It was something here. I believe that uh, so many electronics and uh, connected here and I have loads of stuff to live stream. I believe that all together have an influence in, in, in the um, interfere with the with the connection with the telescope. Okay, now it's good. I come back to the stack view. It probably cut or clipped some edges doesn't matter adjust the color okay the color is fine zoom these hot pixels doesn't matter because at the end I will do the same as yesterday you will see it's hard art <laughs> Astrophotography art. 
we'll see with the Photoshop Express click and disappear bye bye hot pixels warm gears no I think it's really the connection because when I'm not live streaming this kind of stuff usually don't happen so I, I'm the pattern is live streaming I have loads of stuff now the audio and stuff camera no Fred Led it's not that I'm sure it's not that sometimes turning off side rail tracking then turning it back on in since can will help settle the tracking probably because I think when it mess with the connection something that we do to the software will will correct it and it's moving again because the stars are not so save I will change to the um, the view without stacking you see it's moving now it was up I will adjust it's with the image without stacking so you can't see very well but I'm adjusting without pausing because the frames well it's better to pause pause so we can correct it okay resume I have to use this workflow you see now it's again here as it should be but this slightly it's not a hollow. hollow this. this is kind of I don't know if you can see I will zoom a lot you see this shape here at the right of the stars this was because of that movement anyway it's a good image so far yeah me too I love this galaxy should I buy 5x or 2x barrel for my dobs 10 inch I also I always recommend to start with the 2x and then later you will see because the 2x it's a powerful it's for visual or imaging or both no cool the 2x visually with the 25 millimeters eyepiece you will get 12 and a half with a 10 you can get 5 which is a, a lot reset the application well but now it's what application the scene scan yeah it, it usually works reset resetting because I remember once that we were here with huge problems and uh, I just reset it and it worked Yeah, no, cool. Buy a, a, a 2x, but a good one. A good one. I almost don't use... Well, in the 6 inch, in this 6 inch, the 5x actually, it works very well because it has a large field of view. But um, for a 10 inch, the 2x is better. Because the 10 inch already has a, a long focal length, I assume. And... Uh, it zooms a lot and the 2x will zoom again a lot teleview <laughs> if you can buy a teleview otherwise you have uh, good barlows without being teleview but the power mate is very powerful I love it very crispy I have the, the barlow I use the 2x I use the 2 inch 2x that I use with my dobs is the, um, the Explore Scientific, it's a medium range Barlow 
and it's fine it's very nice yeah this is still moving i think i will do what you suggested but if i reset the application i will have to align again <laughs> no it will mess it all No? Okay. Now we center it. I suspect this is... This has really has to be... When I start live stacking, it pushes a lot. Hopefully nothing to do with a new version. You see, now it's quiet. It's not moving. It's only when I live stack. Because I'm zoomed. Okay. Okay, I'll I will try once more. If it doesn't work, I reset it. If I close Stellarium, will it help one software less? Why is not stacking? It's ignoring. Let me try to close Stellarium. It's moving at all. I closed Stellarium. And I clear. Let me see. No, it's ignoring. Moved. I will reset it. In the app. Hello, then, Daniel. Marco. Use only scene scan app for slew and always ending the slew with up and left. Okay, I will reset it. I think it's a software issue. Looks like. Because it's very weird. Now I, I'm moving. It's me that... Another object. Look, look, look. Right in front of, of the galaxy. Look, 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 look. Look here. My god, I never saw so many objects in one night. In one live stream, it's not one night. From different positions, we were at the north, now we are at south. This one is large. But this can be a plane. I don't know. Who knows? We only see white. Oh, he's moving. He's changing direction. No, oh, no, no. He's the, the mount. <laughs> he's the mount that is moving. Uh, now I, I was scared. It was changing direction. So fast. It, it looked like a, an UFO, but no, it was the mount. It should be a plane. Okay, I will reset. I will should I disconnect the telescope in the in the button? Ray, the slew should end up and right. Okay, I will try that first. Up and right, okay. Do it all again. My tracking is good, but sometimes I think that's up that up is down. <laughs> and all goes to the <laughs> that's when I reset and by magic it's flawless okay I will reset I disconnect the, the telescope okay Alex I will do it okay first disconnect this close this okay 
Horrorzeit. Okay, I restarted it and now I will have to connect it fast. Connect scene scan. Okay, it's connected. And now what? Up and right, okay. Up and right. It clears the backlash in the warm gears. Up and right hey then daniel 50 uh, 500p telescope it's a 20 inch right congratulations Yeah, Carl, it's true. It happens to all. Thank you, Epic Chrome. No. Uh, yes, I did it, Marco. I did it, I did it. That part it was... And now what? Is it tracking? No, it's moving. I will do point and track. I know, but I have the connections. Stellarium. I will open Stellarium. And connect the telescope again to see. Because I think that time that uh, time that I reset it, where is the telescope? I, I have to connect it. I restarted the, the alignment also. It's here, but it's not here. If I tell the telescope to go here, it will be wrong. You need to align, of course. I did it the last time. Isn't tracking. Okay. Click arrows to turn on tracking. Arrows. Okay. It's moving. But it's not tracking. When it's tracking here, we get a... Uh, I think... Uh, I really have to align, li like Jim said. Yeah, it's not tracking. This is moving. I can... Yeah, I, I will point to roughly to north. The three arrows near the info icon. No tracking. You see? No tracking. Ah, I will click side, here, side real. That's it. But the telescope thinks it's at north. You have to, uh, to align. Yes, Jim, you are right. Because the telescope... Well, wait, if I played solve... Maybe in sharp, sharp cap. Let me see. Sharp cap. If sharp cap can solve it. Without alignment. Bingo. Let me see. Yes. Now, Solarium... Yeah, it moved. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on the sombrero. We don't need to align because sharp cap does the job. Good. That's good to know. That's good to know. Now I will recenter with scene scan. I prefer to, to try scene scan. And let's see if this works. At the end I will end up using the regular go-to or nothing as usual let me see if it's 
It's tracking, okay. But it's moving, you see. Click the sombrero. Doing well. No, it's moving. It's moving, look. It's moving. I'll click the sombrero, control 2. Okay. It's still moving to the right. I will move it again. Okay. Recenter it. It's still moving. At my end nothing worked. Alignment was bad, mount kept on moving and couldn't get it stop it. Tomorrow I will delete, delete everything and start from scratch. Annoying. You're right, uh, Ray. I don't like this. I prefer to use the old method if this is like this. If it's to be like this with the old method, I uh, look moving again. Okay, I will do the alignment. No, I think, and this never happened to me. Only happens now that I have everything with different uh, the sharp cap, sharp cap connected to Stellarium and to SceneScan and live streaming at the same time. You see, it's still moving. Never happened to me this. Never. I will do something like this. I will disconnect the Wi-Fi, everything. I will point roughly to north only. Hold on. Okay, then let's see now. Connect the Wi-Fi again. I, I restarted everything except the, the softwares, the other softwares. It's like there's a bird, yeah, <laughs> but it's very well tight and so, since can, hopefully we, I didn't disconnect the, um, the other software, so hopefully it will work like that. Okay, alignment, one star, Polaris, begin. If I had to restart every software, I did it wrong. Let's see. Let's see what happened now when it stopped. Well, no Polaris, it's up. Let me see if it moves. No, it's not moving. It's fine so far. Not moving, okay. Up. Should be up, I think. Well, I don't know because I, it was, I didn't uh, point to Polaris and move the telescope down. So I don't know. Where is it? But I can identify look another object. This is crazy tonight. Crazy. Let's play it soft to see where we are. And then we adjust. But guys, if this <laughs> Keeps working like this. But it's weird because yesterday was working fine. Taking too much to... To solve what's happening here.
you know what I will find the old fashioned way myself I'm getting tired of Gotus. But now I don't know if it will be. <laughs> I move it manually. Okay, I'll. No, now it's moving. Let's wait a bit. I had problems slewing with Stellarium too, so I stopped using that. I only slew with Sin Scan and all is good. And I, look, it's still moving. I think I will do the same. I was so... Uh, another object here. If this doesn't work... Flawless. Okay. Bam, bam. Alignment su successful, but I think it's out because I move it manually. I don't know. We'll see. Now, plate solve. Let's see if it plate solve. Weird. Not solving. Close. Close. And close everything. Reopen sharp cap. Reopen the camera. Where is it? Let's see now. Let's wait a bit. It's it's not moving. Another object here. This is crazy tonight. It's the first time I'm live streaming with so many objects passing. You see now it were uh, it was at south now at north. Not moving, everything is fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Marco. Yeah, I I'm I'm just a a, a step away to do that. They keep it simple style and that's it. Connect the telescope. Look the time that we waste with these things. Imagine with mounts, more complicated mounts. No. Yeah, it's fine. Now everything is fine. Let's see. Let's see if it plates solve now. Moved. You saw? 
You saw it. The moment I start plate solving, bam. No, 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 no. I will do the old fashioned way. Hold on, I know what's... No. It's not this sharp cap. Could be my fault. It's with other... I have to open the... Um, a second instance. Let me see. Yes. It's this one. Could be that. Yeah, now the IP address. Yeah, I, I was with other shark cap. Okay, okay, okay. This was my fault now. Okay, control two. Fine. Let's see now. Just. I have two instances. One for the go to. And another one for the virtual telescope to use with the equatorial platforms. And now I open it the the wrong one. Now I open right. Okay. Let's see now. Plate solve. It's solved. Okay, 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 okay. Now, sombrero. Let's move on. Control 2. You see, so many softwares, I hate that. I don't like to, to have any softwares. One to do this, another one to do that, another one to do other stuff. They have to fix it in in astronomy. They have to turn this much user friendly. More user friendly. Okay, we got sombrero and everything seems f another object. Look, look, at south. Look. I'm not lying, look. It's about, maybe we saw about 20 objects until now. Not 20, 15 maybe. Look, right in front of the... <laughs> right now, some astrophotographers doing this galaxy are having bad frames. Okay, we have sombrero. Let's recenter this. And I tell you, if this doesn't work now, I will not use this system again. I will keep it simple. Yes, Abiosis, me too. Me too. Because this is to enjoy and when we have this kind of problems one after the other. If it's one once in a while, we deal with it and that's it. But one after the other and after the other, it's getting... I think it stopped. It stopped. Okay, so far so good. Live stack. Weird. Bam. Color. Stretch. So far so good. Ah, uh, we got one odd pixel right there. Hello Linux! I think when you solve it's not on Polaris. I don't know, but it's here 
it's a line. I don't like these hot pixels, though. We try another thing. Nexus. <laughs> okay. Nexus will be. Let's see if these darks are better. Yes, they are. The ones that I made with the Nexus are better. So, so <laughs> you see, everything is clean. This will be fine now. Oh, I love... I'm using the sequencer that, that pulls the, the, the darks when I use the Nexus. The star is on the Nexus. The focal reducer for Newtonians. That are, I, I'm not using right now. It will be good now, I think. Enhancement, let's try uh, Unsharp Mask. It's the one that is working fine with Luminance. With Luminance. No noise reduction. Now I'm not using noise reduction. I don't know why it's working better this way. With only... The new Unsharp Mask with Luminance. Yes. They are working fine, Ray. Let's see the new feature here of the stretch mode, but it will brighten the sky. Yes, brighten, brighten. No, I will use at one for now. Two, yesterday was two was better. Okay, I will use two, but just Instagram. It, it seems it's the best settings for me, for my sky. Stretch mode number two, this new feature they have here. And um, adjusting the histogram as usual. And the image, the background gets better. Incredible, now it's working. Could it be sharp cap messing up with drivers and whatever? I hope those are not missiles flying around. There are, these are crazy times now. We are leaving. No, no, no missiles here. Only on television and, and certain places of the world. No, here we are very quiet. Look at these stars. Three in a row. A beautiful pattern of stars here. See? It seems now it's working. Fine. And we are getting detail. We, wa we will wait a bit. Maybe I can increase to 10 seconds here. I think it's no wind now. The pointer stars pointing to the galaxy exactly. Exactly. Now I'm enjoying. If it's it will be like this, I I like it. Lesson learned. It's not enough to reset the telescope, the go to and the scene scan application. We have to reset those and in addition to that, reset sharp cap and stellarium somewhat the connection between everything probably or the drivers or the ascom behind it i don't know i really don't know but i learned that i learned that uh, the next time i will have to quickly reset everything every software and restart and go A taco. <laughs> and it's stacking very well. Zero uh, frames ignored. Let me try to increase the exposure. 
8 I will risk to 10 seconds see what happens closure with the same darks everything it changed the, the color no problem the background color but it's fine let me see the um, because it's stable the mount when the mount is stable it's very nice let me see the, um, the filter. Stable. Everything is green. I think I can even push a bit more. 15 seconds, as we have already a good image there. 15. Let's see what happened to the background. It will change for sure. But the darks are working fine, either ways. No hot pixels. 15, 15, 15, it's over. Yeah. No, it, yeah, it changed uh, the color, the gradient, but it's fine. We may adjust here with um, the new feature also. First histogram, let me see. Adjust here, lower the blue. For some reason, the blue increased now. And stretch mode. One, two, three. Okay, three. Super stretch. Decrease the red. It's better. And it's better. We can zoom it now. 15 seconds now. It's weird because at the end I save a snapshot and what I, uh, if I post this picture, what should I I tell in a picture? Because everybody wants to know the, the exposures. What should I, I tell? 8 seconds, then 10 seconds, then 15 seconds. I don't remember how many were the frames with uh, different exposure times and at the end the file as far as i remember the file recorded the te the text file with the settings will tell us 15 seconds which was the last one lower the stretch here and adjust the colors again moving the histogram not sure if it was a good idea to change the exposure time but you know like this yeah I'm adjusting the colors only. The background was a bit weird. Longer exposure make two much brighter, of course, with the same gain. I will lower the stretch here, but it's changing the um, the colors, the background colors. Let me try the enhancement to take off the unsharp mask. See what happened. It's worst. And a uh, color noise reduction, maybe. Let me see. It takes a bit of color. It's purple, the background around the... Um... I will decrease the red and the blue.
Oh, it's green. Still purple there. Oh, less green. If I decrease the exposure again to 10 seconds, let's see what happens. 10. Will it change again? I didn't know that you can change exposure time without having to change the darks. Yes, Antonio, you, you can. It's not... Um, it's playing against the rules, but we can. When I increase to 10 seconds, it changed just a bit the background, but to 15, it turned this here. Now I don't know how to fix it. Let's see if I can apply uh, that gradient. Well, I, I will increase again to 15 because it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. 15. And now I will mess with the gradient here. With this background. See what happens. Linear gradient removal. I will use the old one. It's not experimental. Let's see the next frame if it applies it. I just want this core of the image. I don't want this purple here. It was better before, Bartek. It was. It was. I will do something. I will do... Like this. Uh, 10 seconds, 12 seconds, 15 seconds. I will do a native 15 seconds from scratch. See what happens. Hold on that I... It will clear. When, but usually when I increase, it doesn't happen this, the difference of colors. I don't know why it happened. Okay, color. This is with 15 seconds now. But it's still purple. It can be the telescope pointing... No, but it's not. I don't know. Oh, it's with a gradient removal. Hold on, off. Clear. Color. Stretch. Now it's fine. No gradient removal, nothing. Just a stack of 15 seconds. I think now it will be the one. Then I will increase at the end. Just at the end, after... Thank you, Quasar. Yes, give a like to this live stream. If you're enjoying the show, remember to give it a like to spread it all over the world. Thanks, Aviosis. And notice it, that the mount is behaving well now. Well, it had a, it had a bit of movement because the stars clear. Probably because I'm increasing to 15 seconds. I I resetted it. Clear. Yeah, the 15 seconds for this mount. 10 seconds, it's better. 10 seconds, it's better. I'll do 10 seconds. 
instead. These two last live streams and this one tonight are a bit uh, of testing stuff, as you could see. That means I spend more time in these little things. Yeah, 10 seconds, it's better. Look at the stars. Now we just have to wait. Yeah, everything under control. Let's wait. Yes, Carl. 15 seconds with a 650 millimeters focal length without guiding is hard. But I'm, I have no plans at all to do guiding. Never. Testing is edu educational, of course, Linux. And the educational means that everybody learns. Even myself. Yeah, testing in the United Kingdom is uh, is difficult. If you're lucky and you can move. I couldn't live in the northern northern countries. I'm so used to the, the warm environment, the weather. I couldn't. That and living far away from the sea, the ocean. I need to be near the ocean. But you see, it's the trade-off. You you want, and and there's more. If I want even I'm on Mortal Five. If I want even better skies, I have. I have if I want. If I want, I can move more far away from the urban places. I have. Uh, I I'm living in a country, but near a city. So I'm more or less st strategically positioned. But if I want to go deep in the in the in the mountains or something that we have loads of them, I will get precious skies with good portal sky, portal three, but a good portal three or even two. But then the connection will be even awful. And the other stuff, when we move from... I, I grew up in a, a big city. I'm not, I'm a, an urbanite. I'm a, a urban guy from nature. I decided to move in a moment in my life. I moved with my wife. I was already married. And I moved with my wife. First to south because of the weather. And to have... Uh, more nature around us instead of uh, stupid people neighbors in uh, in the city because we have we have lots of people you, it's inevitable to have stupid people around and jerks so i i decided and uh, it was the the best thing we did in our lives to move to a, a kind of place like this I prefer to have rabbits and birds and um, every kind of bugs and everything than having annoying neighbors every day and having to to see them every day. No way. And light pollution. And here I have a, a good sky to good weather. 
usually you see the weather is awful everywhere but here we can can see this this beauty so worth it Let's do the Unsharp Mask, Laminance. It's a trade-off. We can't have it all. We can't have it all. Your friend in Mortal 2? Starling. We don't have Starling here. Yet. We will. But we don't have here. This is Portugal. This is a, a very small country quiet country which is good I could move for instance to imagine that you like very much the weather and the beach and so on the warm weather and you move you can move even to a better place but then you have other you will have always trade-offs always you can go to a warmer place but you will have more storms for instance more dew like uh, in Florida, for instance. They have more dew in Florida than here. We have always a trade-off. I could uh, choose a, a place, but better place, but far away from here, from Europe. Uh, to be in Europe is very comfortable. It's like being you being in the United States. And you know from Europe, the you that uh, are from Europe, you know that it's very comfortable live in Europe, inside Europe, European Union. Oh yeah, Anthony, you're waiting for your wife to retire. Then you move away. In my case, it was not uh, retirement because we were working. But I was moving to, I was starting to build my own business while I was working and she could move in the same work she could move to uh, the same company but here so we manage that but I recommend to everybody that uh, if you feel that you can now we, ha we didn't have kids now we have but the kids you can move with the kids it, it, it will uh, limit your choices you will have to to move thinking in the kids but it's it's not a problem actually me and my wife we talk about about this we'll talk a lot about moving again but it's very difficult now to to beat this place the the things that i have here the quality that i have here it will be very hard to to beat. Do that, Antonio. I I I give you my my feelings <laughs> about it, and you will refresh your life. Maybe you know Quasar. Who knows? But I'm I'm happy like this. I don't I don't complain. I can't. Light and air pollution, of course. Okay. <laughs> yes, Mazif. Talk to to him and uh, and say that we want to pay to have uh, Starling here. I didn't. I don't mind to pay Starling. If I have available. The, here in the south of Europe, uh, there's a pattern in, in the south, at, at least in the south. I don't know in the northern countries. South is, I'm talking about Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece. This kind of countries. This All this line at the south. The telecommunication companies have like a monopoly. We have different service providers, but they are all the same. Well, actually, the world is almost like that now. And uh, they do everything they can with the governments to shield 
to new competitors and Elon is a competitor, a strong one. But he, it's only delaying. Slovenia, beautiful. Marco, beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I was not there in Slovenia, never. But I one thing that I like, uh, that's why I like YouTube also. I don't watch television, almost. In YouTube, you can know any place because there's always someone that uh, was there and shared that with you. It's like, for instance, now, if I, I decided to, I will not do that. But if I decide to do a channel about, um, even about my country, my Portugal and Spain, that it's near my country. And I was traveling here and showing the, the best places because there are beautiful places here. And recording it and sharing with the world. Anywhere from any part of the world can see or could see the beauties of uh, that I, we have here. So the others do that. And that's why I know very, very well some countries from the experiences from the others, but we can see the beauty of it. But not, what I really like is to go to a country and to connect with the people, to feel the culture, to feel the, the people, not to go to the tourist routes, to go and to be one more with them. You know what I mean? To be one more. Even knowing that I'm I'm not, I'm from outside. To I like a lot to integrate with the culture. Randall, I use the Meteo Blue. You have loads of them. I use Meteo Blue. It's a nice one. Weather. They say I will have rain on Wednesday. Well, Monday tomorrow will be fine. I will do it. Do the live stream mounting the virtuoso table. Then probably I will stop. That's why I also wanted to stream tonight. I know that will be too much. Two streams in a row. But uh, I wanted to take the chance. And I like to share with you. It's still 10 minutes now stack. It's still working fine. You see? The problem was really that those drivers. When we have uh, the live stream mess with loads of drivers and hardware and software and everything in the background. If we add to that the USB cameras, the, the sharp cap, the the stream platform, the streaming platform, everything, and the low connection, this get jerky. It's solved. I will not use, I will announce, this is an announcement. I will not use again the Stellarium with GoTo with the Sharp Cap. A bit sad to realize that, but I will not use. I don't need, I don't feel I need it. I will point manually to the sky if needed. I like it. My table? No, but I can... Um, I don't know, Ray, I, I, I thought on that. We have levels here, but uh, I'm in a, in a moment that I really don't care. I place the virtuoso outside. Roughly a line, point to the, the old fashioned three live streams ago without this connection. I like to keep it simple. Keep it simple always pull, pull me to the simplicity. When I start going to a path that is starting to complicate, you see, I tend to go again. It's like a, a magnet to the, the keep it simple way. 
and I feel better because of that. At the end, it's because I feel, and probably some of you also, better and I enjoy uh, much more with the simplicity. Thanks, Mark. Hey, I thought on that, Jim, to blame Sharp Cap, the new Sharp Cap, but uh, look. As an argument, I'm using the new Sharp Cap beta version and it's working fine without that. Uh, I think it's really the... And that's a, a feature of Sharp Cap that it's sequel to the previous versions. The use of the drivers and no, I don't think so. Well, it can be, but... Mm, it's I can't blame Sharp Cap because it's working fine now. Look, 79 frames stacked, zero ignored, 30 minutes. The go to outside is stable. Look at the stars, look at the stars, round and shape and sharp. It's not Sharp Cap, it was that, that uh, overcharge of the... Um, it's overwhelming, the loads of drivers and stuff. It crashes on me a lot. On you, Jim. What, sharp cap? Yeah, Marco, keep it simple. Keep it simple! Thank you, Randall. Thanks, Carl. So now I will show you, it will be fast, what I was going to show. Breaking news. So this is Vasco. Vasco is a project that I read this a while ago when he, he placed the link. They search, it's like, uh, let me do like this. They search for, like the SETI, they in, from NASA. They search for extraterrestrial life, but in the good and scientific way to do it, like uh, you do on, on NASA. So it's not, uh, it's nothing out of science, okay? What they do is they collect, uh, they are collecting always permanently information with different telescopes, information of the, the stars, vanishing stars, to see the pattern, to analyze the patterns, and then with those patterns to see if they can get something different that shows that uh, some electronic stuff is working in a region of uh, of a star around a star if can be another earth basically summarizing okay and they count also that's another interesting thing they count also with the participation of some of public astronomers that want to participate in this. I don't like the... Well, I, I don't... Well, I have to say the truth, even that you you like that. I don't like the scientific... I like the scientific part of it a lot, I love, but made by others. You know what I mean? I don't... I like this uh, kind of uh, work, uh, do, watching the object as a regular guy that I am with a telescope not the scientific if someone asked me do you want to point a telescope and every night register this uh, movement or whatever of objects uh, i don't uh, like very much there's people fortunately people that like that that does that job very well and they count uh, uh, with citizens also well but if some of you like you should uh, Invest on that.
They are preparing the next generation of SETI. SETI is searching extraterrestrial uh, intelligent life, I think it's uh, the name. This is the, the team of the project. And one thing that they do that I like. This was in, in Nigeria. They do... Where is it? This is the work. The girl that... Uh, the woman that uh, managed this project is from Canary Island. Laser communication and beacons in the Milky Way galaxy. We humans shoot powerful lasers into space with many purposes. Satellite to satellite communication, military reconnaissance, reconnaissance and telescope laser guide stars. Other advanced civilizations may also use powerful lasers. We are searching for such extraterrestrial lasers. So this is what they are searching for in a scientific approach, fully scientific. They are searching for extraterrestrial lasers. You see, this is important. This is important to for us to have that. OK, this was the a, a brief shout out to this project. You know that I like to bring the news and it was Samir precisely from Canary Island. He is not here, but I don't know if he he knows that the the director, the, the woman that uh, managed this project, it's from there, from Canary Islands. Probably he knows. Green Cat finds the Sharp Cap the easiest program. Nina and APT have too many options going on. Far too complicated. Me too. I. And the Sharp Cap is not only that, it's that uh, for what I do or what I do, it's the, mo the, the most powerful, the most powerful software. So Nina is more dedicated to astrophotography. I think it's what I... But you can guide, you can guide with PS2. And you can save all the frames here. The raw frames exactly the same way. Yes, it is, Jim. Very annoying. Randall, there's no... Uh, the. Uh, you have an AZ Studio. I have it here. But it's very... I like to keep it simple. But, but one thing is to keep it simple. Another thing is the lack of options. The... The, um, the AZ Studio from ZWO is a um, very poor software. Actually, it you don't have to learn anything. You just open the software and you don't have these options to, to adjust the image like we have here. Very, very weak. I don't like. I have it here, but I don't like. me adjust this because this is getting you see the six inch <laughs> look at the six inch work with this beautiful galaxy how good it is now with shaped star, sh uh, sharp stars heavier you know where is it AZ studio you have AZ studio Version, new version released. Remind me later. I don't want to know what happened here. Ah, uh, it's like this. You have here. Hold on. AZ cap. Planetary imaging. 
and you have here where is it easy life is this one deep life stacking see the platform is only this you connect the camera i will not connect to not to mess with sharp cap and they have, and you have here few options the gain of course the beaning exposure time the resolution but apart from that the histogram here you can't um, you don't have you have brightness and contrast noise, noise reduction and that's it it's very very weak you can't do many stuff as we do with sharp cap it's only connect the camera ring and go well for a beginner if uh, wants to try this but honestly honestly this one for a beginner the sharp cap if you connect and do the same things choose the capture area the beaning the exposure time everything and you click on live stack you will be fine and then you have more to to evolve it's getting beautiful I think I will get the details here when cleaning the noise six inch telescope a 400 bucks or 500 bucks telescope you see and you see how he's working so well now shark cap works best for EAA of course Ray of course it's for me it's the best one and there's loads of options and you can do astrophotography if you want actually i could now i forgot i could do that i i to see if i remember next time if uh, we have a good night i will record the frames well i have a challenge for you i have a challenge for you in the future near future I will, for you that are in Discord, because it has to be, we have to connect. I will record. For you, Mazif, Ray, Bird, da Birdman, Cat Daddy, Astro Kade, Astro T, everybody there. I will get a, a good night like this, a good object. And I will record the frames, the raw frames. And then I will place on Discord. And I will ask you to process them, post-process them. Because I know that you use different softwares. One use uh, Pix Inside, another one use... And different methods also. Affinity Photo. So now... I will not do it because uh, it's done already. 25 minutes and uh, I will not be here more time. Yeah, I, I think it it's not like to be the the best picture. It's to to compare at the end it's to compare the the processes that you use. And for you, you will benefit from that because imagine was here Astrocade and Ray. Imagine, Ray uses Serial. I think, no? Ray, you use Serial. Astrocade uses uh, Affinity Photo. I think I'm right. Two different softwares. You can process the same files. It will be the same files. So the difference will be the processment. And if you, one of you, see that, no, this is clearly better, Imagine that Ray, the, the image from Ray is better than, than yours, Astro Cave. You can, because Ray will provide the information. I did like this, I did like that, and I use this software to do that. And you can see, well, I, I may get better results with that software. Or, uh, you know, and if you use the same software, the, the one of, uh, of you that processed the same e image with the same software, then the difference will will not be the frames they are the same will not be the software because the software is the same but you, you will know the tweaks the simple tweaks sometimes a detail that 
ah you did like that your image is with a better background or a better detail because of that we have to be humble if you, we want to grow no and the fact that the the guy at next to us uh, in uh, that situation will have a will get a better picture it's an opportunity for us to understand what he did different from us that leads to that result you only have to be humble that moment because next time you will adjust your processment and you will get better up level but it's important to be humble don't be never you are like people on social networks they want to have the better picture and then you don't know the tricks they use it's real and gimp you see gimp is another one it's free also master darks and flats yes yes i provide I will that in the uh, the the next live stream. I have to remember. I will point to you. Otherwise, I forget. Uh, save. Raw frames. This is enough because I never save it. Save raw frames. Community. I will not forget. so then and i will learn also because i will see the differences yeah it's it will be cool and it's not very hard because i i can record for instance and then i can compare also with my my quick astrophotography i will also not the raw files but the snapshot i take i process with uh, and then we can compare all the the results to see the difference i'm sure you with a good processment and investing time in that will have better result than me but that doesn't matter it's only to see the difference and then other people can see will i want to invest that time to have a, a, a better picture or am i satisfied am i, I Am I okay with uh, the result from from a snapshot from live stacking because I don't have the time? You see, different people can can benefit from that. Astap. Yeah, some people use Astap. Astap is a, a it's a cumbersome also, but it's uh, it's powerful. At least the ones that use them, that use it, uh, the Astap to post to stack and process. I saw good results with it. So you use Astap, Cyril, picks inside GIMP. <laughs> All Linux versions. A good way to compare and learn from each other, of course. It will be healthy. Green cat, the pixel inside, yes, it's expensive, but at the end, if you really, if I had a tool that to uh, get that had what I want from a tool, the simplicity, I do wouldn't mind to pay. I prefer to pay and have a good tool that don't pay and have a bunch of tools that I don't use because they are complicated and uh, cumbersome. But yes, it's complicated. It, it has a, a learning curve. Pix inside light cheaper with less options, probably. But an astrophotographer will always want more because it's like it's addictive. While I do a quick astrophotography and that's it, you that do astrophotography want always more. And then think. This year you have the, some of you know this. This year you got your re results, and then what? The next year, next season again. You, as you do astrophotography, you have already pictures. Imagine that you have already pictures from the main objects. What will you do? 
What I do here is watch them again. But you have already pictures because your goal is the picture. So, what will you do? Improve the pictures. And to improve the pictures, you have to move forward in the learning curve. Invest probably in more, more gear and stuff to have better tracking, to have better images, better whatever to improve. <laughs> That's why it's additive. And the brands like the, the it, of course. To upgrade upgrade telescopes. And we like to, to buy even me that the, don't uh, get into a higher level astrophotography. I like to buy stuff. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the drawer from my sponsor, Astro Art Finland, by the way. To participate. This show is sponsored by AstroArt Finland, your astronomical partner. They are great and... Uh, well, they are great and they are crazy. You will understand in a while because I will not receive only the drawer. They are crazy. I will receive another accessory. I will not spoil it. But uh, you will understand after I... I use it and they are crazy and uh, I will make a video with it and uh, probably I will start a video telling that they are crazy you will understand crazy good people of course I never saw any brand acting like that but you will see <laughs> Oh god. This is funny. Of course, Ray, you go back to the same objects to see your improvements. And compare. It's natural. A filter drawer. Yes, I have the filter here waiting for the, the large nebulae to use with um with a refractor. I'm getting patient to, to have a good a good session. As long as I have maybe the next live streams will be like that. A week or two. That's why you use Serial and Pix Astro Cave. Yes, and the thing is that uh, you, if you move now that you use Serial and Pix. But if you want to move to another one, you have another learning curve. If you like. Hey Odin, of course, this is the Dobsonian power. And it's really the Dobsonian power that we are watching here. Dobsonian power. power. Linux end up reshooting things process it after a couple of years let me save this 35 minutes very nice look at, at the color the 6 inch looks like a large telescope here at the end of the night I should place the, the 12 inch next time you only use a stop for the initial null, initial grading and analysis. Okay. All those softwares. I don't like in the planetary imaging that we use all those softwares. I do them. I use them because I have no choice. I can't live stack the planets. If I could, I can't. Planets, we can't. No, no, no. I have a filter wheel. No, first I don't uh, need a filter wheel, an electronic filter wheel, because I don't do astrophotography, I don't do mono, I don't... I don't need RGB filters to get in the wheel, no. It will be... Um, how do we say in English? It will be a uh, superficial... Oh, no. 
it will be let me see the translator 12 the filter wheel a an electronic an electronic one will be a a whim 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 capricci you know things that we don't need but it's good to and i have a, a filter wheel a manual one that i could use but i don't use because of the weight i only use for visual almost nothing with the filters no it's it's not the thing that they they will send me it's not about the when i i i'm telling that uh, astro art guys well the owner is crazy it's not uh, in a good way of course in a positive way it's not because of the accessory accessory that you will send me an additional accessory you will send me with a trower it's because what he want me to do with it it's because of that and i don't want to spoil it you will understand and you will say he's crazy and you'll say tiago you were crazy too probably i don't know yes ray in your in your situation i think the pics inside can be a, a good uh, look there are situations for instance the pictures that i see if you get a, le a level like uh, birdman cat daddy and mazif and uh, steven miller those pictures that they post no matter the telescope it's uh, already a, a level that you have that skill and you have that uh, you enjoy that you should and in that in those situations i think you should go all in because um, because of the results look at this let's see the i will leave this stacking a bit more it's very stable amazing let's see some of them community, community pictures, pictures. Now that uh, everything is smooth. The community pictures is a section we have on Discord. So join us on Discord. To participate in the community pictures, just join us on Discord and post your pictures there. It's free and you get much more engaged with the Dobsonian Power community. Look, yesterday... We stopped here. Look, this picture from Mazif. This Crescent Nebula. You see, Mazif is all in astrophotography. Look. This is NASA. Look at the picture from NASA. You see the picture from NASA? Look at the picture of Mazif. The details. I prefer this color. I always... Uh, most of the pictures... Well, not most of the... Some of the pictures that you take... Using Hubble palette and... So, I prefer... I like the... The proximity to... To the natural colors when I live stack. But that's me. But the details. See. And apart from that. The, the thing of the colors. The oxygen here. You got great details here. You see here. And these bursts here. That's not behind the Hubble image. 
I think it's Sable. Let, let me check. 25 light years. Mm, no. It was a triumvirate of astro imagers. Three astro astrophotographers took this picture with a telescopic collaboration. 30 hours of narrowband image data isolating. Okay, this is not uh, nothing to do with Hubble, of course. Okay. But it's three guys that to do this and Massive could get more detail here. See? And this is on NASA. So Massive, please. No. Massive. I know that you, you will talk to Elon to put me the, um, the Starlink here in Algarve, Portugal. And as a gift to you, as a, a gratitude act i will talk to nasa to replace this picture with yours i'm not sure if they will answer me but i can try so you see mazif three astrophotographers on nasa mazif three astrophotographers on nasa see so this to tell you, let me just read this, burning fuel at a prodigious rate and near the end of its stellar life, this star should ultimately go out with a bang in a spectacular supernova explosion. Found in a nebula, rich constellation Cygnus, this is 5,000 uh, 5, light years away. The star is shedding. The star is talking about is this star at the core. We can see here. And also this star is more beautiful with the, the spikes. Just an additional. This star, which here is very faint. The star is shedding its outer envelope in a strong stellar wind, ejecting the equi equivalent of the sun's mass every 10,000 years. The nebula's complex structures, these complex structures, are likely the result of this strong wind interacting with material ejected in an earlier phase. You see the interaction with the material ejected by this star. A supernova. So this to tell you that if you get into a certain level and you enjoy, that's the most important for me, is to enjoy. If you enjoy doing this, not suffering to do this, if you enjoy doing this, if you the, the times that you complain about uh, I'm one week, two weeks, uh, like uh, Linux said before. I will be two weeks with, um, with bad weather forecast. If you enjoy astrophotography, you can benefit from that. Uh, those two weeks of bad weather, you will not place the telescope to process images that you capture raw frames that you captured before so i think it's worth it i tell in this because i don't want you to get the feeling that i don't like astrophotography so i don't like you to get to no i think that uh, in a certain level you should go full into that because it will get even better and you ray that you have loads of different uh, setups and gear and uh, and you have time also at least to to process and if you like i think you you like i think it's a good uh, a good uh, investment and I, I don't have anything with pics inside look the birdman cat daddy also here with the uh, the sombrero but it, i think it was with a refray yes the refractor to this small it's more difficult 
He's very good in, at least in my opinion. This was Ray with the moon. I can't wait to t experiment that, to test that thing with the moon. Eight hours of exposure and 97 Diol also a good one for a trouble and cushion. I will, I will have to be faster here in the pictures. This was a, a beautiful composition here. With some clusters from Lecrem. Another Adam. Ten inch Skywatcher. Beautiful natural images. From the setup. And with an eyepiece. He's doing... I'm watching this video from uh, Adam and I'm... I'm... Um, how to say this? I can see exactly what... what he was feeling and... and doing while doing this because I did this and it's amazing because you can... with a dog you can see the moon so... it, it seems like we are there. With the EDIP and it's amazing. Forgot to do this. Uh, this was when you were in Disneyland. Potato, my camera sucks. Don't judge. Well, at least you. You got a, a beautiful picture at the end. It's a beautiful landscape picture. Look, you can see the clouds here. Don't be so hard on your camera. Well, save for a, a better one. Jonathan, the M5. Your camera sucks. You see the answer. Yeah, this this the, the other one is is better, of course. It looks like the sun. There's always some someone that uh, equatorial platform, 10 inch knob. Ah, I'll be real. This is a very interesting object. I forgot to watch here this this year. It's a double star, but it's very interesting to watch because you can see the difference in the colors. The blue one, the smaller one is the blue one and the, the red one. It's a very nice target for a dog or Newtonian. I like it very much. CW, I forget your real name here. The Whirlpool and the Black Eye. Leo Triplet. With some satellites here. Auto bombed. Thanks, Linux. The Orion Nebula. Joshua. Birdman Cat Daddy. Ah, this region is very hard to, to make pop. S -A, S, S A D R region. I think it spells like that. Sadder. It's full of nebulosity. Hydrogen. M101. Very nice this one. Ray. With the Skywatcher 120. And the boats again. These vertical bands were the, um, some artifact that probably the the weather or the light. And Mazif through the clouds. So we have to zoom it. It's a little pinwheel in it. 
or not? No. M61, okay, no, no. Elephant trunk, Mark from Canada. Good detail here. And I will leave it here. So you see, loads of many nice. And now I will save this 51 minutes live stacking. Let me readjust the, the colors, the histogram, because there's always a slight shift in the histogram. I'll do like this. It will be a nice result, you'll see. And then tomorrow I, I do the quick astrophotography. It's special because it's your picture and you are having fun doing it. For me, that's the main issue. Of course. Of course. So at the end, we start this stream with this awful scene scan and weird connections. I will not use it again. But at the end, it uh, it ended well. So thank you very much again for being our company tonight. I enjoyed a lot this Saturday live stream. I'm glad I did it. And uh, Monday, probably Monday, I will be here in a different live stream, mounting the, the table and placing the telescope, taking some pictures to see how it... Well, taking pictures, no, because I have the smartphone as a camera. But... Um, see of uh, how it behaves and if it's a, a good buy for you also that have the, the Virtuoso. Have a great rest of the weekend and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Dobsonian Power.